Now, for more on the devastating impact of the floods, I'm joined by Kuram Shahzad. He's a political analyst and president of the Pakistani American Press Association. I really appreciate your time, Kuram. Now, Pakistan's climate minister has said wealthier nations should give reparations to Pakistan, given that they are predominantly to blame for climate change and aren't fulfilling their pledges. In what form would these repara reparations best uh, suit Pakistan's needs at this time, do you think? Right now, the United Nations uh, Secretary General is there, and this is the indication that this, the situation is not in the control of the nation because of the magnitude of the damage over there. So just to give you um, some background to it, until uh, August 17, uh, there was no big effort from the international community to help ease the situation or help aid the Pakistani community in Pakistan. Um, so until the United, United States initiated $100,000, which is a very small amount, to help Pakistan, which actually authenticated with the U.S. allies and the countries to help the Pakistan. Uh, you know, it was kind of a gesture from the United States that it will be the United, international community should be helping. And the later on, $30 million was given to the United States. And, and, you know, the congressional delegation went to Pakistan. And now the CENTCOM, the U.S. US Defense Department, is also um, helping Pakistan, and U.S. aid is mobilizing all over uh, the devastating areas. Mm. So initially, there was a lot of uh, hurdles, hurdles um, to, uh, in the in, uh, the effort to help Pakistan raise money for for Pakistan to because of the credibility of the existing political parties. But now the U.S. is into it. Now Antonio uh, um, is also just Secretary General is also there, which. 193 okay. countries now are into this crisis. Yeah. So I think uh, this is the background of it that the the, the minister um, has concerns. Now, researchers argue that while the increase in floods is very strongly linked with climate change, most of the losses incurred during the flooding are also due to Pakistan's poor governance and weak economy. Are Pakistani officials overlooking what some describe as the uncomfortable truth? That is, that is ex ex you know, perfectly... Uh, said by the Secretary General that this is the this is the reality of it. That Pakistan is the victim of climate change. Say 45 percent of the emission, which is created by no, the, I'm not talking the, about climate change. I'm talking about the, the researchers say it's not just about climate change. The issues with Pakistan here about bad policy and not learning yes. from the lessons of you know the catastrophic floods from 10 years ago. Yeah, that is that is absolutely true. That the Pakistan is unable to build the infrastructure. Uh, the small dams, we do not have any dams. The, similarly, the political parties are looking for the political gain in the very certain areas where they have the political influence. And the country-wise policy, there's no policies, there's no infrastructure, there's no funding. The country is struggling for, for years uh, for those funding to build those small dams or any uh, fuel-efficient energy uh, mechanism so that they can counter the floods and other uh, uh, nature uh, you know, the crisis. So this uh, political, and there's no stability and when it comes to political governments. So this is very, uh, you know, the, the fact, this is why the Secretary General was saying that we need to build, the, we need to help Pakistan with not only the financial aid, with the, to build their resilient infrastructure, to build this uh, massive support where they can adapt the, uh, the new challenges of uh, climate change. And also, he mm -hmm. also mentioned the hotspot. Pakistan is a victim of, of a climate change hotspot and the world the, who, the world, and he called out to the world leader, saying uh, the the mass the emission uh, problem is caused by you, and the the, the developing countries are actually struggling um, mm -hmm. with the outcome of it. So this yeah. is where uh, the infrastructure is still not there, and uh, we as a, as a nation, we don't see it's coming in the next 20 years. We don't see any of this. So if Pakistan received the long-term international climate assistance it so badly needs and certainly deserves. Uh, with the political instability that some researchers say isn't far off the failed governance of countries like Sri Lanka, what guarantees are there that these resources will be used properly to undertake the necessary mitigation efforts? This is exactly where, the, when, where I got started. The international community did, but not raising money until the United Nations, United States came into it. That people uh, internationally, the leadership, the people, they do not have confidence on this, uh, the government because of their past corruption um, in the past. So this is a huge problem. And I think uh, staying in the democratic uh, uh, pathway is the only way they can refine the system. At this point, Pakistan do not have 
uh, our plan that how they are going to ensure the international community the, the money that they're raising it actually going to the people who actually need on the ground so those challenges are there and then this is why the military established because that is the only institution the world uh, trusts. the mil military has established their uh, uh, they call military relief fund for the flood flood victims so Mm -hmm. The money, actually, which is the CENTCOM, U.S. Uh, Defense Department's money, is also going to the uh, relief fund. And the international community, especially the American, Pakistani American community here, they are raising millions of dollars, and they are going into the uh, military, um, they call it Army Relief Fund. So that is going there. So that part is, is really challenging. The people do not trust in the pe People's Party, PMLN, and the PTI, that the mm -hmm. money probably not going to eventually go into people's uh, uh, politicians, uh, personal account instead of going to the uh, to the people. And same goes in infrastructure. When the World Bank and IMF, they, when they want to spend money, they send their own consultant to the country to make sure that the money actually go into the projects. Mm -hmm. So that challenge is always the, is, is, you know, the prime concern international donor for Pakistan. And in the meantime, there will be a long and no doubt arduous cleanup effort. Uh, thank you very much for your time and insight there. Kuram Shahzad, the political analyst and president of the Pakistani American Press Association.